Is this StreamYard? You are live, yep. All right, guys, welcome back to the Home Service Expert. My name's Tommy Mello, and today is going to be amazing because there's one thing that cures everything in business, and sales. that's sales. And I got Andy Elliott. He's the man. He's actually here in Phoenix in Fountain Hills. Uh, spent a couple hours with him, I don't know, two, three weeks ago. He's an expert in the automotive industry, sales training, virtual training, communications. He's the founder and CEO of the Elliott Group, started out in 2010. The fastest growing automotive sales training company and virtual training company in the world. The company is currently training 185,000 salespeople and 1,500 dealers across the globe. Andy also runs the largest car sales training channel on YouTube with over 3.2 million minutes watched every single month. He also hosts a, hosts a live automotive sales seminar called the Master Closer Seminar in Scottsdale, Arizona with over 400 salesmen, GMs, and owners in attendance every single month. Let's freaking go. Let's go, baby. You ready Today, to blast yeah. off? Yeah, I'm telling you, if somebody's watching this right and you're watching it live, you need to stop what you're doing. Grab a pen, grab a piece of paper, because I promise you the stuff we're going to go over today will change your life, especially if you're ready to execute. That's it. Listen, that's rare. the problem that I have is a lot of people know what they need to do, whether it be working out, eating right, getting their cardio, showing up early, but a lot of guys don't do it. What I really like to start with, Andy, is uh, – Let's talk a little bit about who you are, how you got started, how you broke records. Uh, I think I got a book up there, The Greatest Salesman in the World. And uh, the guy was killing it in car yeah, sales. Joe Girard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was like 20, yeah, 30 so, years ago. Yeah, sold the most cars ever. So when I got in, I read his book when I was 18 years old, Dead Ian Broke, same book. Every book on your bookshelf, I went through every single one of them because I'm older, so I'm 43 at this time. So you got to realize that right now, if you were 18 now, you could go on YouTube, you could listen to this. We didn't have that back when we were younger, okay? So we got a book, we flipped it open, we read everything, we tried to underline anything we could find. We'd read a three, we'd read a 300-page book to try to find five pages that could change our life, right? That's what we did. We we dug. Well, Joe Girard broke the record in the United States for the most cars sold. So as I got in, I said, hey, man, you work hard for your money. So money is what you get. It's not the units. And as I was younger, I was broke. My mom left when I was two, right? Which isn't a victim story, but she rolls out when I'm two. So it's my dad who raises us. There's five brothers and sisters. And I'm telling you, everybody on this call, everybody watching this, a lot of people, the reason why they don't have the life that they want is because they live in shame. They've done something in the past. They burned somebody. They don't believe they can have it. They got a guy sitting next to them that doesn't think they're worth it. So then they don't think they're worth it. And nobody believes in them. So they don't believe in them. Okay. I want to tell you, there becomes a day in your life where you say, you know what? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And you change. And I did that. I did that at 18 years old in the business. And I made straight D's in school. I never wanted to learn. And you know what's crazy is that I wasn't interested in anything until I got in sales. And at 18, um, I, I would have loved to have gotten in solar. I'd have loved to have gotten something else. But automotive was what I got introduced to. And I remember going out on my first day. My boss said, hey, we're having a meeting. Go outside, sit on the porch. If somebody walks up, just tell them we're in a meeting. We'll be there in a minute. This old man came up. I started talking to him. I was super nice to him. We ended up going and driving a car. When he, we got back, he's like, hey, I'll take it. Let's see the numbers. I remember going inside. And they're supposed to send another salesman in to cut you up, right? Because yep. you're the new guy, right? Yeah. And by, and by the way, I had no business talking to this guy. But I did such a good job building a relationship and building a rapport and connection, which I didn't even know was a skill at that point, which is the skill, which is how your business is where it is, because you know how to connect with people. And so many people, they've got other businesses, but they can't connect with anybody because they think they're just selling stuff and they're going out and giving information and they're not connecting with anybody. And without people, you're screwed. Right. So I go out and I make a connection with this guy and the new salesman tries to come in. He goes, Hey man, Andy's brand new here. I'm going to finish the deal. And the guy goes, Hey, listen to me. I like him. I'm going to finish this with him. And if anybody else comes in, I'm leaving. And I was like, damn, I'm going to get fired on my first day. Right. <laughs> but you know what? I was just doing my job and I was building rapport. Guess what happens? I go into the manager's office. He gives me a pencil. It's like a proposal. If you've ever been to a car dealership, they give you the numbers, right? He hands it to me and he goes, go in there and ask him if he wants to do option A, option B. I'm sign it, bring it back. I'm like, dude, this is easy. I go in, I say, hey, you know, uh, Tommy, there's an option A here, X amount down. This is your monthly payment. Option B, X amount down. This is your monthly payment. Which one do you want to do? Guy goes, what's the interest rate? Now, I wasn't born with money. I, I know this sounds illiterate, but it's a funny joke. I say, uh, the interstate? And I remember, <laughs> I don't understand what's really going on. The guy looks at me and I'm dead serious. And he goes, forget it. Don't worry about it, Andy. The guy can see right. I always say the eyes are the window to the soul. The guy could see that I was being the best I could be for him, but I really didn't know. 
And I told him a story in the car, how our family grew up poor and that this was going to be my first job to try to make a difference in my life. And just because I was being real, which is something that's rare in this world mm -hmm. anymore, you know what? The genuinity, the guy signed option B. I went back into the office, handed it to my manager, and he goes, get this guy in the finance department now. I don't even know what that means, but I'm like, okay, I guess something good just happened. We get him out of there. He goes and drives out in his new vehicle. My manager pages me to the sales tower. He goes, Andy, do you know how much money you just made? And I said, dude, if I just made five bucks to eat a sandwich, number one, I've never had more than 10 bucks in my pocket or the same two pair of clothes growing up every day in my life. And now that we're getting past this now and you're growing into the millions and all the big money and all the cool stuff, dude, I was broke. And you know what I love about anybody? I want to know when you were broke and you didn't make it and nobody believed in you, how the hell did you get out of that? And that's what podcasts like this can help people do. But you know what? He goes, Andy, you just made $1,700. And I remember stopping at that point And I thought, no freaking way. How could I, on my first day of work, go be nice to someone, believe in them and treat them good and make $1,700? Physically has to be wrong. He goes, also, you had the high gross check of the week. You're going to get 500 cash tomorrow morning in the meeting. Ah. I said, no freaking way. You know what? <laughs> From that point on that day, my, my veins changed, not because of money, but it was in my blood that I was going to hunt. I'd been a fisherman sitting on my ass my whole life waiting for something to bite. I was now going to go on the hunt and attack. And so books like that guy that killed it and all these books on the shelf, every cassette tape I could get my hands on, I consumed it, ate it up, chewed it up. I was the hardest worker. I wouldn't go home. My managers had to throw me out of the dealership and say, dude, get out of here. We're closed. <laughs> and they wanted to go home. I didn't want to leave. I was on the hunt. And by the way, this podcast isn't for everybody. The one that I'm talking about today, I'm talking about for those of you that want to be the freaking best, like you, Tommy, that want to be the best. You don't have a garage door company. You have the best garage door company. Why? Because you don't want to be number two. You want to be number one. I don't know what it's like to be number two anymore because I don't want to be. And so every freaking day, I know somebody's coming after me to take it all away. Not a chance in hell. If you are, you better be studying as hard as me. You better be working as hard as me. You better care about your customers as much as me. You better know your business better than anybody else. And number two, you better be training every day to try to figure out how to kick your own ass. We all have holes, right, Tommy? You've got holes. I've got holes. But the difference is, is the winners try to figure out how to fix them so their competition can't find them. And that's it. So that's where I started was in sales. And I realized that the only way uh, to wealth was through self-education. So, and that's how I'm a sales trainer today is because that's what changed my life. And, you know, it's just crazy if, you know, you see these people that go to prison and now they're teaching people, you know, in prisons, like how to do stuff. Like, like I can teach somebody that time and experience doesn't matter. It physically means crap. You don't need 10,000 hours. What you need to do is take control of your damn mind. And you need to study what you want to be good at. And then you need to learn it better than anybody else. And you need to give a shit about people. And if you'll do those things, you'll have more money than you'll know what to do with because you'll be elite. And Tommy, we're in a world full of amateurs. Everybody listening to this, most of the people they do business with are amateurs. Everybody's waiting for a pro. So what does that mean? That means if we become great and we're pros, the whole world will want to do business with us. So for any company out there, if you want to be the best and you want to take Tommy down, you're going to have to have a company full of pros. That's it. And you're only going to get there by training your people because what are pros? They're trained employees. We spend a lot of time training and reciting and going over and over and over. But one of the things I'm really, really big on right now is I tell a story. You know, when I'm there, listen, it wasn't always easy. My mom, she, he, she and my dad got a divorce when I was seven. She worked three jobs. She busted her ass. She kept us in the same school zone. She taught me how to love. She taught me how to work hard. And guess what? I started mowing lawns the minute I could. Right. I was 10 years old, mowing lawns, shoveling snow. And I said, listen, my mom moved out in 2010, helped me run the business, answered phones. She did everything. And guess what? Here's what you need to do. This is what you should do. And if you were my mom, who I love more than anybody in the world, this is what I do for my mom. That's it. And I give options. And I talk about this a lot because if you're not giving options, you're giving ultimatums. That's it. And I don't spend more time on a five star than a one star. I said, listen, what do you say? I show you some options and pick which one you like. And we smile. Yeah, I was about and to say, you notice you smiled because at the end of the day, I think people forget to smile. And they don't ask for it. Yeah. They, they don't have any idea what to say. Well, that sounds expensive. Well, first of all, we've got five green lights. And the biggest one that I, we call it Mellow the Customer, last mm -hmm. name Mellow, Mellow the Client, yeah. is we get to know them. I know if they got a wife or a husband. I know if they're at work. 
it's a one legged stool, right? So we get the other leg in. We get we make sure both decision makers are aware. We make sure they're price desensitized. We make sure we know how they're paying for it. We make sure to mellow the customer. We make sure to turn it over. Great. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, it's crazy because we're a garage door company. They said it couldn't be done. They said there's no way you could get the sales. Door. But it's not a we sell things people want, not what they need. That's they right. don't need, they don't need a garage really. Yeah. But they want to get their car out. But they also want some of the technology. They also want the flooring done. They also want the storage done. And it's amazing how we hire people that can't even make eye contact with us. Interview correctly and hire right. Mm -hmm. So I recruit, I orient the people after I hire them, and then I train them and then I retain them. And I think a lot of people can't retain their top, their top guys because the top guys, you need to let them be an entrepreneur in your company. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you the culture, the leader is, is separates everybody from everything. The leader will be the one in charge of the culture in which people want to stay or leave. If you want an unrecruitable team, unrecruitable means they can't be recruited. It's going to have to be more than money. Oh, hundred percent. After $70,000. Yeah. The majority of money and after 200,000 money doesn't make any difference. They've proven it over and over and over. Simon Sinek or Jordan Peterson said, uh, Said over 70 grand, it doesn't make a difference. They got to feel wanted. 83% of people are willing to leave their job now. Yeah. And the thing that, you know what makes a difference? You work out with your people. Yeah. You break bread with your people. Yeah. You, you care about your people. You hang out with your people. If they've got a best friend or best friends at work, they're not leaving. Yeah, that's it. And by the way, again, it all goes back to the leader. So the leader has to self-lead, right? And I know that we'll move around through different things. But if anybody's watching this and they really want to build the best business in the world, and they want to build an unrecruitable team, you're going to have to self-lead yourself which means the way you take care of yourself, the way you operate, the way you work, the way you believe, the way you love, like all that stuff, it has to start with you because your people can't emulate something they aren't seeing with the leader, right? Um, but yeah, no, we, we do work out. We do all kinds of crazy stuff. And by the way, we're not any other company. So if anybody right now is listening to this, if you have a company that's like everyone else's, then there's no reason that anybody should come work for you because they can go work anywhere. You're the exact same. And Tommy, one of the things that I love you is your passion. Your passion is fire. You know, on these podcasts, you don't just give out information. People can tell by looking at you that you love what you do and you're obsessed. There's not like, I want to win. I want to make money. No, dude, you're obsessed, which means if we could probably take all the money out of the equation, you'd still do this and you'd do it for free. Uh, you know what? The fact is, uh, not to toot my own horn, but I don't need to be here. I, at so many. want to be here. I want to be here. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy, I built the life I wanted because I don't do the things. I don't build pivot tables. I'm not logging into our system, doing all the. The, the reporting I hire for my weaknesses and built a life that I like to maintain. You know, a lot of people say, go to cold plunges, do all this shit, right? Run all these long miles, do all this stuff. And I'm like, listen, do what's sustainable, do what you could do every day and live with it. When you go to Walmart park furthest away, walk your dog an extra mile, eat something you love, but, but it's also sweet for you. You know, whether it's peanut butter or whatever, there's easy ways to figure out the life you want to not make it impossible because that's why there's all these fat diets. These people yeah. are like, oh man, 75 hard. Well, day 76, you suck again. Yeah. So it, it, whatever it is, <laughs> well, winners and leaders do um, consistently what others don't do occasionally. And I think you need to just, what you're saying is, hey, you need, if you want to have a great life, you need to figure out how to do things more consistently. And that's, that's what you need to do. And I think that a lot of people consistently consistency beats everything, everything every day. Simon Sinek said, Hey, brush your teeth for eight hours. It's not going to make up for five minutes a day. No, it's not. <laughs> you can't work out all day and do cardio for 12 hours straight and say, now I'm shredded. Yeah. It's going to take consistency for 90 days to see some differences. Yeah. That's the hardest part. Yeah. Is I'm not, I'm not near as good as you are at self-control, but guess what? I put myself in an environment where the trainer shows up to me. And now I'm getting a chef to make sure I'm eating right. Yeah, but you're reaching for more now. Remember what I told you? There's two rules to business. Number one, don't ever let anybody else know your business better than you, which I think everybody watching this, whatever business they do, home service, whatever it is, don't let anybody know it better than you. And you're always figuring out what are the new laws, regulations, things that are coming up, compliances, what state I'm in. Dude, I mean, you're multidimensional figuring out, making sure you know your business better than everybody else. Then number two, try to figure out how to kick your own ass. What does that mean? If somebody was going to take you out, how would they do it? Well, now that you've built your business and you're going massive, you're not going to stop doing that. Now you're like, hey, man, I'm not just doing this for a year or for two years. I'm doing this for the long game. Now I need to start getting healthier. You're, you're adjusting as you're going. And that's it. That's what life is about is growth and changing and growing and, pro and progress. And, and I believe, look, I'm the first one to get lost and say I need help. 
If I even have an inclination that I don't know, I find the best person yep. in the world me too. and I say, come help me. Because why? I, I watch these guys get ready for, um, what the hell's the name? 300, you know, they all got ripped. That was a month diet. It's out there. You know, they do that in Hollywood all the time because they're the best trainers, the best diet, the best supplements. Yeah. Is success leaves clues everywhere. And yeah. you just got to learn to ask the right people. I figured out how, like right now I'm working with AI. Right, artificial intelligence. Yeah. The shit we're gonna be popping off by the end of this year. Dude, it's, it's not crazy. even fair. It's not fair. No, a I mean, lot the, of people are in trouble, man, because that deal, whoever understands that is dangerous. Well, the, the no one what I love to do is what I go hang out with this dude when I hire somebody. Yeah. What I could he tell a great story? Does it give great eye contact? Is he sincere? Does he love people? Yeah. Or is he listen, I don't care where you came from. Most of my top guys, they're not, you know, no college, sometimes hardly any high school. But they know how to smile. They know how to. They're hustlers. Yep. And the deal is for me, is you know you got somebody watching out. You know I'm going to show up. You know I'm going to be here. A lot of guys say, dude, the owner I had, he was a twentieth of the size of you, but he didn't show up. A lot of business owners complain, my people aren't great. My people aren't great, but they take no self accountability. Yeah, you look they don't the look at themselves in the mirror and mm -hmm. they don't say, look, dude, yep. I'm the reason. The day you walk into your shop and you say, I'm the issue. I'm the problem. Mm -hmm. I need to work on me. And they, you, you know, the worst thing too, is when you go in front of a group of people and you say, we need to get better. We need to hit this. We need to do this. Why don't we figure out what's in it for them? What if I said, you know, at the end of the day, Andy, I know, are your parents still around? I know your mom's obviously, but yeah, my dad. dad is. Yeah. So your dad, what do you like to do with your dad? I only see him once a year, but I don't see him very often, but I know it would be my wife and kids. Okay. So your wife and kids. So if I said, Andy, look, you talked a lot about Disney world. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you talked about going for three weeks. Now, I'm going to build you a plan for today, this week, this month, this quarter, this year to make that happen. So when I'm having a hard conversation with you, we're talking about Disney World. We're talking about that second house you want to use as an annuity. I never bring up our goals. Mm -hmm. Why don't I talk about your goals, get you excited yeah. and say, this is what needs to happen. I peel the onion back and I motivate you on your stuff. Same thing when I'm in the garage. I don't say, listen, this is, this is what you have to do. I say, listen, I know you've got a son sleeping upstairs. He wakes up every time you leave. Let's make sure we take care of him. Let's make sure this place is safe. What else is important to you? Yeah. If I say, sell me this pen, if the fucking minute you say, whoops, if, if you say, <laughs> it's all good. if you say to I me, I love excitement. Well, the, the, the thing is this pen, it, Jordan Belford, you know, Wolf of Wall Street, ask questions. What Everything. kind of pen are you looking for? How often do you use it? Oh, you're part of NASA. So you need to be able to write upside down if you're in the, uh, in the rocket. Yeah. All these things are so important. And all I do is ask questions and I say, hey, who's the HOA president? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. What are your neighbors' names? Do you think they could use our service because the garage doors were installed at the same time? Yeah. What is it okay if I put a yard sign? Could I get a video testimonial? I want to be your garage door guy for life. I want to earn your business because guess what? We're changing lives here day one. I can work anywhere I want in the world. The reason I chose day one is because they they represent my family. They, they take care of Different. us. And guess what? I trust day one with my family, and you should trust them too. Yeah. And if you said that every time and you practiced it, and you had guys that believe. They got to believe. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried to sell something that you don't believe in? No. I could, but obviously it wouldn't last for very long. It's so hard. It's so hard to sell. So why not go? Why are these people out there selling stuff at whether it's HVAC, roofing, plumbing, that they don't believe in what the owner's doing? They don't believe in the bigger cause. You know what? I tell everybody we have open book management. We're, I'm allowed to make money. I'm not doing this to break even. But also, you guys are allowed to have the best lives ever. I need to have a dream big enough that all your dreams fit inside. That's it. And I think that a lot of people, I mean, if you ask me, Tommy, and obviously I'm in the sales training space, I think a lot of people are chasing other people's washed up people and they're trying to hire them in their business. And, and, and that's called time and experience. And here's what I want. I want somebody who's hungry and wants an opportunity. Tommy, we could walk in. I've got an 18-year-old right here with a camera. We could literally grab him, put him right here in your company. Tommy, you could walk out and have a conversation and say, hey, listen, look, one day when you find your wife, are you going to cheat on her? I'm just asking. Are you going to cheat on her? Are you going to be a good husband? Okay, cool. You need one. Am I right? And once you find the right one, you're going to be with her forever, right? Okay, cool. So when you find the right one, take care of her. Same things with a job. You're going to look for a job your whole life until you find one that you love. And when you find it, are you going to get rid of it and go jump and get another one? Or are you going to take care of it your whole life? Okay. My name is Tommy Mello. I'm going to show you a skill, a skill set that no one else has. And I'm going to show you how to get everything you've ever wanted in your life and more. And I'm going to mentor you your whole life. I'm going to make sure you're in a great culture environment. Welcome to our family. And if I can do this for you, you'd probably be with me forever. Would you agree? 
Okay. Now listen, here's what we need to know is that the world's full of amateurs, people that say they know it all. You know what they need to know? That people are all that matter. And people want something. That's how we got their damn information. Okay. So when we go out, we got four or five other people coming out, giving estimates or whatever, and they don't care about them. So I'm going to ask number one, can you care? Because people don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. Can you care? Number two, if I teach you what we do, the setup question, when we walk into the house for three things that we look for right out the gate so we can build common ground with them within the first 30 seconds, right? How can you connect? Can you do that? Can we practice that together? Okay. I want you to do that with me every single day that I come into work. I want you to come up and have a 30 second conversation with me. And I want you to tear the wall down. I want you to smile like crazy. Listen, kid, you're 18 years old. Okay. The best gift that God gave you was a freaking smile and a heart. Can you use it? Please. Can you? Okay, cool. Now, after that, they wouldn't, we wouldn't have had their number if they didn't want something. So have you ever seen somebody drive through the McDonald's drive through and go through the other side without food? No, they go through food. They went through the drive through because they wanted the food. They wouldn't let you in their house if they didn't want to do business with you. Now with all these other amateurs that are out there in the world. Okay. If you can believe you work for the right company, then I want you to go in there and fight for our company, do a good job and make sure that you serve them at the highest level and give them world-class customer service. Can you freaking do that and show up for freaking a one? Can you? Yes or no? Yes, I can. Good. Send the soldier out. He comes home with the goodies. It's that simple. And we could go, and a lot of these guys are holding on to dead weight and baggage. And I call it, I call it the golden handcuff syndrome. There's a lot of uh, owners that are handcuffed to crappy employees because they're afraid if they leave, they'll go out of business. Yeah, but the opposite's true. Yeah, the opposite is well, true. Well, the, there's great people that are working for an asshole. No, no, no. But again, this goes either way. Yeah. Yeah. I was working for freaking the Antichrist at one point in my life, <laughs> right? But he was paying me $2 million a year and I couldn't leave. And you know what? I eventually left and restarted and started my own business. And for two years straight, we literally made no money. But the juice was worth the squeeze to buckle down and get what we wanted and give up, you know, two years of living. We purposely stepped backwards. But I'm telling you, the gold handcuff syndrome can go both ways. But I'm saying, I think that a lot of people right now, they need to just be in the right culture. And I think cultures are everything. And just walking in like to your environment, everybody that knows you, the reason why people respect you is because they know you take care of your people. Dude, you are a hardcore businessman. You want to win. But at the end of the day, you take care of your people. That's a freaking leader. Well, yeah, absolutely. Our, our number one thing is aspire to be number one. Mm -hmm. I say, I don't even, I don't play to lose. Literally, I got beaten ping pong all the time. So I got the best coach in Arizona to coach me. I do everything to win. I don't enter a game and go, but here's the difference about business is I don't make short-term decisions to win. Mm -hmm. I make long-term decisions to survive through anything. Good or bad economy, I'm still growing and winning. So many people live in this fear. What's going to happen? I'm not sure what I should do. It's like, look, if you're already performing at the top level, best KPIs, conversion rate, average ticket, booking rate, cost per acquisition, you're going to win, period. Yep. I could outsell because I offer more things. Yep. I could outmarket because we're getting more reviews. And you know your data. Well, the data is everything. Yeah, the the I was going to say, data, that, that's, that's what, what I love about you. You know your data. People don't know it. Well, the, and I mean that. Like three, a lot of three people months ago, man. Know. Look, I know down to the, the the numbers that we use are ridiculous to be able to build the future. Mm -hmm. And as I bring new things in, everybody says that's not possible, Tommy. Mm -hmm. Everything's you know, possible. They, they always say that's a pipe dream, dude. You get your head out of your ass. It, don't waste. But I'm like, no, this is going to work. We're going to add storage. We're going to kill it. We're going to add this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And they're like, you can't buy that many. You can't partner with that many companies in a year. I'm like, what if I told you every company I partner with will become day one millionaires and the third year they'll become multi, multi, multi million. It's they win. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I'll tell you is everybody that I've ever shook their hand and did a yeah. deal with, they win. And I always come true to my word. Yeah. Now, they might not like everything through the process because it's uncomfortable mm -hmm. and there's a lot of change. Well, that's and the they, only way to hit those big numbers is to get uncomfortable. Do yeah, but they don't like that. They want things to go through. They don't like it. It's weird. They look at you and they go, man, I can't do that. If we partner, it doesn't mean you get to work less. Yeah. It means you hustle a little more because we're building your future. We've raised the standard. Yeah. I, I think right now, I love home service, man. I've sold a lot of cars. I've done a lot of stuff, man. Mm -hmm. I used to go offer so low. I'd go look at a $4,000 car and offer 600 bucks. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times I didn't get it, but a lot of times I did. There were days that I drove the car, got it washed, detailed it, and sold it for an extra two grand. Mm -hmm. There were days my buddies they didn't want to they didn't want to deal with a seller because it's a lot, right? Yeah. If you're a normal person, you don't want to deal with it. So they drop off their cars to me. One guy dropped off his car. I said seven fifty. I had another guy come pick it up in an hour for two grand. 
and I gave him an extra 500. Yeah. I said, Hey man, I did okay on this, but this is, I I've always liked to get uncomfortable. My first time on stage, I walked out. I was like, Holy shit. And then I was like, now I'm like, I don't care. No. I don't even get nervous. I'll go out there and I'll just start telling a story. And, and that's why it's so easy for me to get with a customer. I'm like, listen, I'll tell you what, Andy, Mr. Elliot, I'm here to earn your business. Mm -hmm. One way or another, I want to be your garage guy. Cause I know, you know, a lot of friends, neighbors, and family. And I know a guy like you, you're going to make my day. You're going to make, so listen, what is it going to take? Yeah. And, and, honestly, and build value. Yeah, Tommy, I think that right now, so anyways, everybody now communicates, right? So it's ever since COVID, everybody kind of like got distant a little bit, right? With face-to-face. Right. -face. I really think that that reset the barrier, I think is good because a lot of people got disconnected. You know, they had to wear a mask and stand six feet apart for a while. And then guess what? A lot of people still are disconnected. So what does this world need right now better than ever? Communication skills. They need communication skills. Tommy, they need eye contact. You already said, I'm not hiring a guy that can't look some or a woman that can't look somebody in the eye. So when we're interviewing somebody, if somebody's not looking at us in the eye, we should say, hey, look at me in the eye. Look at me. And if they can't look at us in the eye, then they probably can't go out and look at our customers in the eyes. I think the hiring process is probably where it all starts. But I really think that since the great reset happened since COVID, everybody should train their people on how to communicate how to articulate their words, how to find new language. I know Tommy, A1 garages don't have the same language that even though they're different in personality and body language and the way they care, they probably don't have the same language as ABZ uh, garages over here. Sure. They probably articulate their words differently. They're different. They're professional. They probably have a different setup. They probably speak differently and they talk differently. They close differently. Why? Because they're different. So if somebody has been trained on how to sell garages 15 years ago, Tommy, and they're currently not training today, they're probably going to get smoked by someone who is training today because everybody's already met someone at some point that told them something. And if something's said twice, they're like, damn, everybody's saying the same stuff. It doesn't work. Be different. It's okay to fight different. You know, that's what I love. You're a different guy. How can you get what everybody else said is impossible? It's because you think outside the box. Use a different strategy. You're constantly staying ahead of the, of the competition. Well, I go out there and I find my answers. I'm talking to HVAC and roofing guys every week. And I'm taking things. We're at 24,000 service agreements. They said there's no way you could sell a service agreement for a garage door. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't call it a service agreement. I call it a protection plan. And then I save them some money up front, and then it's perpetuity, but I'm waiting. I build a fence around the customer when they want to replace the door. I take care of my clients. You're though. there. And the, yeah. the fact is, and I don't even send out that there's no performance pay tech showing up to maintain it. All we want to do is make sure your door is working perfectly. It's not a sales pitch. It's to make sure we do 151.2 tune-up. We take care of people. We get mm -hmm. them a sexy door. 40% of your curb appeal, the smile of your home, the number one ROI, Remodel Magazine, six year in a row, the best investment you'll make more than your kitchens or bathrooms. And you'll have energy efficiency, save money in the summers here in your HVAC bill. So, this is stuff that I use every day and I believe in it so much. And people are like, dude, I want to buy a garage door right now. Yeah, so the question is, so how do we know? And if somebody's watching this on, on, on video, so the question is, so how do I know that you believe it? Well, you're passionate about it. And that's the problem. That's what's missing, Tommy. That's the reason why your companies are killing it because everybody's freaking passionate. And at the end of the day, everybody's asleep and everybody's dead right now. Everybody's giving information. Google's our mother. If we wanted information, we just go to Google. I wouldn't even need you to come to my house. Okay. And there's programs for that. But the reason why people like face-to-face -face interaction is because people need reasons and excuses why they should say yes and why they should move forward. And the person who's giving it should love their company, love their job, love their product and be fired up about doing it. That makes me want to do it more. So I was going to say, like, based on what you just said, we could take that same information and give it to dead Bob and dead Bob could replay it to someone else and it wouldn't work. Oh, absolutely not. Listen, if you don't believe in your product, would you go to a doctor and the doctor said, Andy, hey, listen, man, um, I think this is probably the prescription I should give you. Try this out. It might not work. No, no. You say, listen, Mr. Andy Elliott. I've heard what's going on. I know your workout schedule, your cardio. I know your food. I know your alcohol content. I know your, your anxiety level, your stress levels. And I know exactly what you need. I got the antidote to make you better. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going like, to write this. I'm like, you feed this it to me, right baby. away. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Feed it to me. But if the, if the doctor, you, you've got to have that confidence level. And I always tell people, we are the doctor. We are the one that knows, but the doctor never comes in there and says, I know what you need, Andy. He asks you a lot of questions. He looks in your ears. He looks in your nose, mm -hmm. your throat. He puts the, you know, the stethoscope. And then he's asked you all these questions. He earns and then the he right. gives you the diagnosis mm -hmm. and he always smiles and says, how are the kids? Yeah. Okay. Great. Andy. That's awesome. And he says, he makes you feel good. And he gives you, no one ever says, doc, I'm going to need a, I'm going to get a second price. 
second estimate. No, you go, dude, I'm going to go fill this prescription up right away. Thank yeah, you. I want to feel good now. Absolutely. And yeah. I think that's the deal is when people get to come up with their own solutions. I don't give people my solutions. I diagnose the person before the problem. Yeah. Because guess what? I say, is there any time we shouldn't offer a new door? And a lot of guys will say, well, what if they got a brand new door? We went out to a house with all brand new wood overlay doors. And we told the, the owner, we said, hey, Mr. Owner, you know, these take maintenance. You got to do a clear coat every year. These doors weighed 800 pounds each. He goes, I had these at my last house. They're a nightmare to maintain. I travel too much. I want all new ones. So there's never a time we shouldn't make offers. Yeah. Because let the customer do what they want to do. It's not your money. Don't sell out of your own pocket. I hate it. Do not sell out of your own pocket. Yeah. Because you don't even have a house. So you could never understand spending $20,000. Yeah, but see, you know your business. And see, again, that goes back to knowing your business better than anybody else. So when you see another garage door, whether it's the garage doors you sell or not, you've studied everybody else's garage doors. So you know the pros and cons. Oh, that yeah. goes back to knowing your business. And I'm telling you, by the way, based on the way that me and you are just like talking and we're having an open conversation, just think about this. What would be the reason if there was a company out there that's not scaling at the, at the pace they want to, what would be the reason for that? It would be because of the people that are going out and communicating with the selling. That would be well. The, there's, you know, there's a few things. Number or the one, the people that are in charge of the people that are going out and communicating well, and selling. A lot of people say I can't sell, and I said, "Where are you marketing?" And they say Craigslist and Facebook ads. And um, I go, first of all, it's twenty twenty. If you want, if you want to be able to sell Mercedes, don't advertise to the Pinto people. Don't go into the ghetto of Detroit yeah, and start putting ads out for Mercedes. Know your audience. Know your audience. Yeah. Number one, market to the right people. I love marketing. I'm probably 50-50 marketing sales. But people always ask, man, listen, what do you think you'd be the top guy at sales in your company? I go, well, I sold your ass. Yeah, You're working here, aren't you? Number one. Number two is I go, maybe I wouldn't have the highest ticket because that's really cocky, right? To say I would, I would have the highest conversion rate. But I, I say to think that, Hundreds and hundreds of millions of people around the world that I would be number one. I don't know that, but here's what I do know. I'm going to know, know the HOA president. I'm going to know all their friends. I'm going to have their number stored in my phone as Tommy Mello, the garage door guy. And every time they search, I know that I'm going to get a yard sign, a testimonial, a review on Yelp, Google, next door. I'm going to make sure that Facebook is blown up. And I'm going to make sure when I walk in there that I find something in common. I'm looking at LinkedIn for what they do. I'm looking at Facebook for if they love Billy Joel. Yeah. And I'll have Billy Joel in my mind saying it, their favorite song. Because I know how to win friends and influence people. Great book, Dale Carnegie. Mm -hmm. Have people fall in love with you. The best compliment I could receive is I could tell you really care. Mm -hmm. I can see this is a place you're going to work for a long time. I can tell you love your job. And because you love it so much, we love it too. Yeah. And if they don't think that you love working there. Yeah, they're not going to do it. That, so they got to believe first when we mellow the customer that they love their job. Yeah. They got to come out to the truck and show them the core values and why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm going to raise my family. I'm going to live the best life ever. This is, gives me freedom because I love it. I used to get hugs from people. Grandmas would call my mom up and tell me how great of a son I, that she raised. That's a compliment that I love. And it, I take pride in what I do. I look at each job and I look at it as a, a painting. I look at it as this is the imprint I left here. And everything was perfect. If it wasn't perfect, I didn't leave. And yeah. I don't think... The pride. And people say you can't hire the, these millennials. And I'm like, bullshit. These, these millennials, millennials will work their great. ass off. They need a leadership. They need leadership and they want to be involved. Yeah, that's true. They need to know where they fit in in the big picture. And do they have a ladder to move up? Yeah, exactly. Like, so this 18-year-old, we're just talking about him. I would say, hey, listen, if you'll Johnny. go out. Yep, Johnny, if you'll go out and you'll do what we say, you know what? I can see within the next 18 to 24 months something really big happening and a big promotion in line for you. You know what? I'm looking for guys that are younger like you with energy, young legs that want to get out on the front line. Okay. I'm looking for the future leaders. Is that you? Good. Well, the next 18 to 24 months, and it could happen sooner if you're just killing it, but I'm giving you a time frame that I want to see it done by. Every single day matters. I'm rooting for you. It's disrespectful to not show up for someone when they believe in you. I freaking believe in you. And I'm going to let him know that I believe in him. And I'm going to let him know we need someone like him forever. And by the way, the way that he treats other people in my company is also important. But I'm telling you, all, all the things that we're talking about right now, you can find out all these problems just by literally getting together and skill testing your people. Well, the interview is a big deal, but I'll, I'll tell you right now, Andy, if you don't I mean, take them out to dinner, if you don't get to know their family, get their wife and husband believing in the process, get their issue. kids. That's a culture issue. Oh, absolutely. But a lot of us just go, okay, uh, you, you, I asked you 30 questions. Uh, 30 minutes and you answered all of them. Okay. But don't ask questions like what's uh, 
Andy, let me tell you the stupidest question. What's your weakest quality? What is something you struggle at? Yeah, I hear that all the time. And, and you know what? You know what most people say? Well, I'm too much of an OCD. I, I do my best at everything, and I want everything perfect. So mm -hmm. I'm like, listen, you ask me that question, I probably have the worst ADHD. I need people to help me focus. I need my schedule made for me. I could go down a laundry list of a million things wrong with me. But I'll tell you one thing. I put my heart into everything. I like to win, and I'll tell you this. I'm a team player, and I'm humble. You could coach me. And I want more for my life and my family's life. I'm like, hard. <laughs> and I'm giving everything I got. And the one thing I'm not, I'm not afraid. Yeah. I'm not afraid to put myself out there. I'm not afraid of no. No just means peel the onion back more and find out. And let's get started today. Because everybody says I'll get started tomorrow. It's easy for you to say. You don't even know what I'm dealing with. Then freaking do something about it. Build a calendar. See what's wasting your time. Oh, my God. I'm spending eight hours a week on payroll. Well, what if I told you could hire somebody yeah, for around 30 bucks an hour that could do it better than you? Get your get that eight hours back. Where else could we find three hours? Where else could we find time five? Then could you do what you say you can't? I love removing excuses. Mm -hmm. I love it because I'm like, Andy, if I remove your two biggest barriers, we agree right now that you don't have any more. Because if you agree to that, then we're going to get you as much success as you want out of life. But if you keep coming up with those two excuses, yeah. then you got two more. Then your kid got sick. Then this happened. And sorry, this didn't happen. Bullshit. Everybody has an excuse of why they suck. And when you stop making excuses and start owning it is the day you'll watch your life start to get better. That's it. Yeah. You did 715 grand in one year. Yeah. When Tell I was me about that. Yeah. So when I was younger and selling, um, it was pretty simple. And by the way, what I love about you're doing, I'm going to go back to this is, and, I, and then I'll go into me, is that you're raising the standard for current companies to know that they can reach for more. Okay. Someone has to do it. All right. And then everybody believes they can do it. Just like the four minute mile. Dude. Four minute mile. Yep. That's yep. it. And, that, and that's what you're doing. And, and I want to tell you that the same deal kind of happened with me. Um, so I, I was 18 years old. My manager told me that um, you can make about 120 grand a year selling cars. If you'll work every day, six days a week, open to close and you'll grind. And that was kind of like what he told me. So I learned as much about selling as I could. I did exactly what I said, six days a week, 12 hours a day. I made 120 grand. Isn't it crazy? The puzzle piece matched perfect. At 19 years old, I had a new manager that came into the store and he said, hey, when I sold at my last job, I made 225 grand as a sales guy. I said, impossible. Joe told me at 120 was max. He goes, come to my car. I'll show you my glove box. This is back when we had the pay stubs and they weren't deposited. And he showed it to me and it was 225 he made. And guess what? At 19 years old, I made 225. Why? Because I freaking saw it. I needed someone to show it to me. And then at 20 years old, I made my first half a million selling cars. And all I did was decide that I was worth it, number one. And number two, I didn't party. I didn't drink. I didn't go out. I became a total immersion. I submerged into self-improvement. And by the way, what does that mean? What does self-improvement mean? Um, I was an uh, introvert, right? So I'm an introvert type person. If uh, I need to speak up about something, I normally don't. And I just let someone just kind of walk over me, right? I yep. was a yes person. I didn't feel like I fit in anywhere. You know what? I found my confidence as I studied to, to become more competent at my job. And then my confidence increased. And then I started to become an extrovert. And then literally I learned that when I smiled, people would smile back at me. So then I was like, dude, I can actually control any one state. Like no matter what they're thinking about in life, no matter what they have going on, I can literally smile and I can pep talk them and I can get anybody to get into the same state that I'm in, which will put, in, put them in a buying state to buy. No sales training here. That's the way this works. I went out, I shook everybody's hand. I took every phone call as if it was my last day to sell. And I love my life. I didn't let any problems happen. And I worked out, which was a big deal that allowed me to have energy and stay in a good mood 12 to 15 hours a day. And anyways, um, ended up making 716 grand W2 my last year selling cars and about 150 grand, 1099 money. So it was like 850 grand. And I was smoking everybody because everybody was making 80 to 120 grand. And I was making seven times more than them. Yeah, but what, why Why is it that they were only making that? Distractions. Distractions. Everything will come down to distractions and discipline. I'm disciplined. I believe. Obviously, it's a mind deal. Like, if you don't think you can do something, you can't. And I know that's stupid. And we can keep telling people to go get the As a Man Thinketh book. But they think it's a book, dude. No, whatever the hell you think is going to happen is what's going to happen. If me and you are going to fight and I envision knocking you out, some way, shape, or form, I'm going to knock you out. I know what's going to happen. 
But if so you I manifest it, yeah. But if I envision some way, shape, or form, like, man, I hope he don't knock me out, dude. I'm gonna get knocked out. Like that's the way this works. Which is, I was telling the power of the brain. It can kill you. It can cure you. It can make you dangerous. It can make you soft like a spoon. It can do whatever the hell you want. And this world out there is controlling your brain. It is. And it has always been your whole life. And so you got to reprogram yourself and reset yourself. So that's all I did. And I'm telling you since then, just like you built a garage door deal, um, I took out Grant Cardone out of the automotive space and I took him out quick. And you know how I did it? With zero advertising money. It was easy. And I love Grant. He's a great guy. We took him out. How did we take him out? It was easy. He had automotive training. You had to pay about two grand a month to get access to it. So you know what I did? I said for one year straight, I'm going to create free YouTube videos on every objection that anybody would ever get in the automotive industry, how to close any client, how to be deadly on the phone. And I'm going to record an entire training curriculum like Grant had, but I'm going to give it away for free. And I'm not going to charge you any money. And at the beginning of every video, I'm going to say, why pay for training when you can get it for free? If somebody says, I need to think about it and you're outside on the lot, this is what you're going to say. If somebody says, I got a couple more cars I'm going to go look at, this is what you're going to say. And I'm going to show you how to close every one of your customers. And what I did is that I created a ton of raging fans after one year and I had nothing to sell them. And literally when I did and I said, all right, I've got a course, it's 500 bucks overnight, made millions. Boom, it hit because everybody was ready. But my strategy was I am literally going to take down a Goliath in the automotive industry by physically a strategy by winning over clients. If you give me nothing and I make you 10,000, dude, when I have something that costs a thousand, you're like, dude, I, 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 it costed nothing. And I made 10 grand. I wonder if I paid a couple hundred bucks for something or paid a thousand, what would that make me? And that was how we built our entire freaking company was on YouTube um, for free saying, text me our whole entire company. And then today, I mean, I think we, we train like 400,000 salespeople now. It, it's a big number and our company's growing like crazy and we're hitting all industries. And by the way, it's, uh, it's never been easier to win. So in case anybody right now doesn't get it, I said in the beginning, the great resets here, every company that doesn't have what they want needs to go look in the damn mirror because it's there. Oh, they're not ready. A lot of companies are just overwhelmed. Listen, here's the coolest thing about life right now. 200,000 baby boomers retiring each day. 11% of them own a business. Those are just up for the grabs because listen, they've got a good customer base. They've got stickers. They've got a lot of great things. When I go in there and freaking it, you know what's so cool? Let me just explain something to you. And this is going to get you very excited. I'm ready. The favorite word in the, this is the best word. I'm going to have you say it first. What does that spell? Arbitrage. Arbitrage. So literally, I buy a company, and then I go fix it, and I'm worth more because we're going to do over 100 million of EBITDA. So if I ask another company, are you going to get to 100 million of EBITDA? The chances are no. But if I said if I'm going to buy 80% of your business and this 20% I'm letting you roll, when we triple you and then you get the arbitrage, you're going to be getting 3x on that 80%. You're going to have this money to go travel and do the stuff you love. And then you're going to go out and you're going to help me recruit more because you believe. And I'm going to let you make money on every deal you recruit. Now, doesn't that sound great? Because if I show you the math and how it works under my, under my establishment, you're better off. But the people don't know this no, because they, they never. Small. Well, and even if they look, because maybe they only need 5 million. You know how many people tell me if I had 5 million, I'd be done. And I'm like, man, you don't even understand. Like, look, money is one thing. But freedom to do what I want, when I want, with who I want, it's and be able to just listen. I, we're, we're taking a charter plane to Sam Point, Idaho. Boom. Yeah, it's expensive. It's really expensive. But who cares? It's it's relative. Yeah. I you know I'm still coming from this dude from Detroit with nothing. Yeah. So it's a lot of money. I'll always be frugal because I remember how much a dollar is worth. Yeah. yeah guess and that's what? that chip that you carry on your shoulder. And you know what I love is as you're communicating, I think that a lot of people they they they've got that I've arrived they're comfortable and they don't carry that chip. Okay. And that's what I love is that you stay, I, I call it controlled anger. Okay. Like I run around 95% of the time with controlled anger. I'm in anger. I mean, listen, I'm loving, but like, I'm pissed off. Like I'm a, so afraid to lose my edge. I spent so much of my life, honestly, until I was 18, 19 years old, getting my ass kicked that I never want to get my ass kicked again. I still remember getting my ass kicked and it makes me sick. And I think if anybody's gotten their ass kicked before, 
I think that they should be pissed off. And I think they should get that edge. And I think that they should figure out how to never lose it. Well, listen, here's the coolest thing about my mentality is you're allowed to win when you work with me. The deal is we could all win. You know, we could elevate an industry. I wrote the book, Elevate, Build a Business, which everybody wins. I don't go to my vendors and I don't say, Andy, hey, man, I want the lowest price possible. I go like this, Andy, tell me your one-year goal, three-year goal, five-year goal. Mm-hmm. I, what if we went into this market? You said you're not doing well. We got to do a better product mix. What if I was able to give you a kickback on this? What if I'm able to put you on every billboard I do? What would it mean to you if I got the five top companies in Montgomery? What if life changing? Yeah. What? What? Let me know what I could do for you. And here's the deal: I'm never going to ask anything from you till I get done with what I said I was going to do. Because listen, I believe in the law of reciprocity. Yeah. I believe in taking care of people, mm-hmm. and I don't need people to come work their ass off for me unless they know they're truly building something for themselves. Mm-hmm. And it's not easy. Could I do better? If I said I was at the tippy top ten out of ten. Why would I even be working? I know I can do better tomorrow, but I'm the best I've ever been, but the worst I'll ever be today. Mm-hmm. I'm the best I've You're ever pursuing been. pursuing it every day. And tomorrow I'm going to better my best. And I tell all my top guys, listen, so often you look at the best coaches in the world. Do you think they spend their time with the top players or the worst players? Mm-hmm. They, they do the starting line. Mm-hmm. And they want to prove to everybody there that this is possible. Yeah. Joe Montana, Gretzky, uh, Michael Jordan. These guys spend a lot of time with them. So I'm always coaching the best. I'm learning from them. I'm asking them what's working. I'm having them try different things Mm -hmm. because I could be out in 22 states right now, just communicating with with my guys across the the, the field in all the different markets. And then here's what's so crazy. We'll bring out a new product and no one will sell it except for one. And then I study that guy for a month and we work on all the objections on how to sell it. Mm -hmm. And like with financing, we never say, hey, Andy, you look like you need financing. You go, what the hell? Does it, what, why what do I look like mean? I need financing? I'll say, listen, you want to see if you qualify for one of our promotions real quick? Yeah. Why don't we use promotion. your, why don't we use my money today instead of yours? You keep the money, keep it for a rainy day. Interest rates are going to come back down. Whatever's going to happen. It doesn't really matter. I heard the whole thing you did on interest. Uh-huh. And I love the chair because that chair is worth a lot of money because I want to be sitting down in your house playing with your dog. Yeah. Talking about the picture of your grandma on the wall. I'm looking at your thermostat knowing you use a smart HVAC unit. So I'm uh-huh. going to get you a smart garage door. I pay attention and I listen. And then if I said, Andy, this is the solution for you and here's why. How many kids? You got a boy and a girl? Mm -hmm. Two girls and a boy. Two girls and a boy. So if I knew that and I said, listen, your girls probably use the door and and between all five of you guys, you guys probably going in and out. So you're using your door four times a day per person about 20 times. If I get you a 10,000 cycle spring, you're going to be looking at about three and a half years. Do you want us to be out here every three and a half years or do you want me to just take care of it for good? Yeah, everybody. And this is the math. And I've showed you, it's it's mathematically. Yeah, and, exactly. but, and you know what I love, though? And I don't know if anybody can see this, but you're writing stuff down. See, Tommy, so good habits are in a seated position, everything is written. When you're closing, everything is written. You can't even talk to me without writing stuff down, even though you're speaking into a mic. You know yeah. why? Because you're closing. And that's how closers close. And I think that a lot of people, when they go in, they have iPads in their hand, which is totally okay. And they really don't have a spiral notebook in their hand to be able to write. So while they're painting the picture of what their life's going to look like, you notice, as I said, three kids, you wrote down three. You're writing everything down. You're moving everything. My mind is running with you. That pen in your hand is a secret weapon. And it's guiding my mind. And I'm just telling you, for anybody that couldn't see it, everything that you're saying, your words are on point, but also I'm guiding you or I'm being guided by your pen the whole time. And everything that you're saying, you keep being like, hey, let me show you this. Earlier, you're like arbitrage. You wrote it down and you made me say it. What does that mean? I was, you were affirming that I'm like paying attention to you. It was a pattern interrupt. Like I always say, listen to me. Why do I say that? Because I already know you're listening, but I want to make sure that you're even really listening more because I'm about to say something that you can't miss. Like everything that we do is done on purpose, but it's built in you because you've studied the game. And I think right now I said, the only way to wealth is through self-education and that's what training is, and that's what improving is. And you've done so much of it that now it's like a warrior out in the field with a sword, like you're ready to fight every freaking day. And I think that a lot of our people, they're asleep and they're dead and they're not awake. And that's why leaders need to wake up and get their people freaking dug in to being great. You know, if you really look at, you you want to know the best way to make a great sales guy is Show him what he needs to do today. So if you go to kelk.a1garagedoors.com, mm-hmm. it shows you, it shows my guys how to build what they want. You want to make 800 grand? 
I'll show you exactly what needs to happen. And here's the deal. For me to get to a billion, I needed $2,500,000 tax. I only need a thousand one million dollar tax. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I needed a training center. I needed recruiters. Mm -hmm. I needed dispatchers, CSRs. I needed to build the systems to be able to recruit and get the KPIs I needed. Mm -hmm. And they are not just a KPI. They're not just a cog on a wheel. These guys are important to me because I literally, like, they are allowed to have great things and put their kids in private school if that's what they choose to do and go on a 10-year anniversary for a month if they decide to. Yeah. And one of the things you mentioned is when, when I delegate, and I don't do this all the time like I used to, but I'm getting back into it, is they got to sign off when I delegate. Here's what needs to get done. Here's why it needs to get done. So you're explaining the, the process. Yeah. Here's what you have available to get it done. Here's the priori priority to get it done. Here's when it needs to be done by. Here's the schedule to make sure it's done. Here's the consequences if they're not done. And hopefully maybe a bonus or whatever. And then did you get, there's a feedback. And then when I have people sign this, I can't tell you how many times they go do it right then and there. They're like, they sign it. I keep a copy. All of a sudden, everything's hunky dory. And it's crazy by writing stuff down and getting a John Hancock. You know how many people I, I tell like of everything that they're getting. And then I have them signed like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. What am I signing? Like now I got to sign. And if it's a real pen, a lot of people go like this with their finger on the iPads. But when they got to sign their name of accountability, it yeah. changes everything. 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 And that's why it's yeah. so important. I think the pen is important. And I make people sign off saying, you understand and you have been warned that failing to replace the indicated part could lead to injury or death and releases A1 garage or service of all liability and may avoid your future warranty work. And I say, listen, I'm not just like a, a bartender that overserves you. I'm not going to be responsible. I was the last pro to look at this door. And I'm not going to leave the frayed cables on there so there's a death trap. But I don't say the death trap to a customer. No, but no, then listen, hey, love don't lie. You know what? Everything depends on the way that your relationship is with them. Okay? It really is. And you can just say, hey, listen, I'm going to tell you this, Debbie, after meeting you and meeting your kids and just us having a 10-minute conversation, I mean, I could tell you if something happened to one of your children, I'd be freaked out because they're amazing. That garage isn't safe. But if you don't want me to do something today, that's fine. You can sign off on it here, but I will need you to sign off on it because it releases me. I was the last one that looked at it. But if it was me and I've got kids, I ain't signing it and I'm going to fix the door. Yeah. Now, at the end of the day, I, hey, I met you guys. Love don't lie. I love people. You guys are amazing. You guys got a special family. Um, fix it. And then and they'll fix it. I've got an eight-step process that works every time. And on the eighth step... I get rid of all that buyer's remorse. Mm -hmm. Andy, listen, I'm here right now. I blew out your garage. I cleaned up after myself. Let me run the door three times for you. Let me just make sure you're happy with everything. By the way, is there anything I could help you with while I'm still here? I've offered you coffee on the way. You've got a profile of me. You know that what I love to do. You know about, I got a second dog coming today. I got a dog Finnegan. You know my whole life story on the picture. And it doesn't look like a mug shot. Yeah. I'm literally smiling, telling you about my life and my family. Form. Family, occupation, recreational things, and material things. That's where we connect on. Yeah, and Pets and kids. Hey, and can we cover something? Like, just because you're in the home service field, like, can we be attractive? Like, can we take care of ourselves? Like, can people freaking look decent nowadays? Am I oh, right? Yeah. Pull like, your pants up. Yeah, like, I'm Don't just, have your butt crack showing. Yeah, because yeah. listen. Clean your truck. Like, listen to me. The words that we say out of our mouth need to be attractive. But also, like, Tommy, like, people need to look in the damn mirror, and they need to also be attractive. People are going to spend a lot of money with you. Okay, so like, take care of your freaking self. Don't you, you're saying don't get an fu tattoo on the side of your face? Yeah, but I, yeah, yeah. Don't get that. That would be a bad deal. But like, cut your hair, trim your face, take care of yourself. Hey, iron your shirt. Like you said, pull your pants up. Make sure your shoes. Deodorant, on Listerine. I carry Listerine. If you went out of my truck right now, yeah, your there's a Listerine like there. A sandwich. And here's the thing. I smile and I'm very respectful. Yes, sure, absolutely. And if I got your name, I'm using it nine times. If you say, call me Andy. I'm like, Andy, can you come here for a minute? I want to show you something. I want you to tell me what you think. I do show and tell. And then I use the best freaking analogies ever. I'm like, have you ever gone on the freeway at 100 miles an hour and pulled the e-brake? Hopefully not. Does your yeah. car work good when the e-brake's pulled? Well, that's what's going on with these rollers right now. They're not rolling. They're, they're literally the e-brake. And you know what? I'll, I'll go into these. I go into these Parallels. analogies yeah. that people just, you want to see these bearing plates, Andy? This sounds like a tambourine at the church. <laughs> and listen, these are shot. They're no good. I never say the word recommend. Recommend doesn't mean it's bad. Recommend, recommend. No, this is what we need to do. And here's why. So there's a, there's a problem, there's a consequence, and there's a solution. 
yeah. they've got to understand that. If your brakes aren't working correctly, that'll cause problems with your rotors. And then you got a caliper issue. That's a $2,800 job. I can fix it today for $200. let us go ahead and get this done. Yeah, I love it. You agree? Yeah, absolutely. And then we shake our head. Yeah, and then painting pictures and telling stories and everything that you keep saying, going into these another analogies. You know why you're doing that? Because you're you're saying things in different language than the last place would have said it or someone else would have said, said it. You don't want to be like anybody else. You want to be different. You want to be relatable and you are different. And I'm telling you, dude, when I, this is selling that the world doesn't see anymore. Everybody are freaking order takers and tour guides. We might as well just- They're not closers. Closers mean the customer says no. Yeah. Closers start closing when they get the no and they close the transaction. That's what a closer is. Now we need to put orange vest on all of our weak salespeople who can't close and just send them to Walmart. But it's the people that are in charge of those people's fault. Because anytime that they're shitty employees or somebody's not good, I always say, who's in charge? All well, I want to know is who's I wrote in this in my book. Yeah. Who's I'm like, well, let me ask you something. If you run a military or you're coaching a team, do you, you get rid of all the players? Or you get rid of the coach or the guy in charge of that squad, right? Coach. And I teach still team six. Yeah. We teach the best of the best. Yep. And the people that buy in and care and they want better for their lives. I'm like, are you okay being okay? Are you content having this? You know, one of my top guys, his name's Eric Parks. Uh -huh. His wife will beat the shit out of him if he doesn't set records. I love that. She goes, look, dude, don't even come back home until you finish this, dude. you know, until you go get it. And he's got the love of his family. He's got beautiful daughters, and he cares. And a yeah. lot of the top guys, man, they're like, listen, I care. And they care about the customer, too, though. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be, I hate the guys that walk into grandma's house. They're like, dude, I got, I got her. And I'm like, this. No. they're not going to walk. I'm like, if you that's can't walk into can. my house. Oh, they're, that's that's what they are. Yeah, trash cans. And the thing is, is like, I wonder that you see the talent that we're getting now. It's an unbelievable. And I changed my whole paradigm. I literally shifted to say, listen, I'm not going to focus on sales. I'm going to focus on recruiting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to focus on finding natural talent. I find that bus boy that smiles, yeah. that hustles. Yeah. That's always like, hey, man. And then I take a selfie with them. And then I text them and I say, let's do a ride along, bro. I want to change your life. But dude, you know what? Nobody's going to do that. You know why? Because they're freaking lazy. Oh, they want okay. everything. They say, why didn't that add on Indeed work? Yeah, no, no, exactly. Because they're freaking lazy. I tried ZipRecruiter. Nothing's working. I posted on Craigslist and Indeed and ZipRecruiter. I it, even wanted to go rear builder. It's so it's hard like to find the right people. Dude, listen, <laughs> that's stupid. You know who I hire? Underdogs. That's what I hire. I hire underdogs. Everywhere I go, I hire underdogs that want a great opportunity, that are hungry, and that I have a, can have a good interview. Hungry, humble, and smart. What smart means, it doesn't mean you're really like, you got a, a PhD. What I do, I do have a PhD, poor, hungry, and determined. Mm -hmm. But um, it doesn't mean you have a PhD. What it means is that you're willing, you, you understand people. You yeah. understand that someone's upset. And you say, listen, Andy, let me ask you a question. Looks like you're not having such a good day. Listen, yeah. if you need somebody to talk to, I know I'm just the garage door guy. But I'm here. I've been through a lot of stuff, man. So listen, I'm going to fix the garage door. Why don't you stay out here? Why don't we bullshit a little bit? And then I'm your friend. If I don't walk out of pay, I go to events and I be I find people that want to be my friend. Yeah. And then I look out. Friends look out for each other. When you're not in a room, I'll defend you yeah. because you're not there. And that's what real friendship's about. Yeah. And a real friend, if I tell them something bad happened and uh, maybe I got in a fight, it didn't go so well, real friend grabs a shovel. It says, well, let's go take care of this. And that's what, that, look, I got the ride or dies. I always say every one of the people I work with, the, the people that are my ride or dies, they'll take a bullet from me. It's a BB gun grazed across probably the, their, their waist, but it's, they'll take a bullet. No, I think some of them will take a bullet. And I, and I think that, um, I really think that that's the missing factor is that you said, you talked about uh, product knowledge and people knowledge. Okay. And you said you hire people that got a good smile. You hire that kid that's a bus boy. You hire people that have good energy, that are magnetic, that you know are infectious, that actually seem like no matter what they're doing, they're just having a good life. So, you know, yeah, just We're gonna go 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes. I can't get enough of this. So let's run through a few things real quick because I want to drop some bombs. So what's the biggest reason you see? Uh, because I'll tell you what. Selling cars is the same thing as selling garages, same thing as selling pipes, same thing as selling roofs, same thing as selling gutters. Well, they showed up to the lot. They are there to buy. Mm -hmm. But what's the biggest, what's a few things you see that could really, really do something? The person that's listening to this, it'll just, it, obviously caring is a big one, eye contact, tonality, mm -hmm. the way we go about things, reciprocity, offering stuff. But what are some of the big things you see when people say, listen, I got to get three price or I got to shop around or I got to talk to my wife. What are some of the, 
Yeah, simple. So, so what we teach people is just to learn simple rebuttal. So I don't care what industry, and I know it's home service that you're in, but let's just say any industry. So if because you have a lot of people that own businesses or even salespeople that like you because they've heard you at a conference, they've heard you somewhere, they like your style, and they follow you because you're kicking ass, and they like that. So I'm going to give you an example. So what we teach people is that, number one, everybody can buy, came to buy, and will buy as long as you do your job. So number one, like before I even meet somebody, I'm going to have a delusional belief that everybody's going to buy. I think that's step one. You got to own that. I think step two is who's got the best attitude in the room, okay? Are these people going to draw towards you or are you going to draw towards them? Look, they're scared. When you open the door or when you or somebody comes into your lot or wherever it is, look, dude, I know how they feel. So our goal is, is that we've got to be the one who feels great so that they attract over to us, okay? So like we're going to make them mirror us. We're not going to mirror them. So we're going to have the best freaking attitude they've ever seen in their, in their life, which is a great state. Now with the delusional belief in a great state, now we need to know our job A to Z. Okay. And A to Z would be like, I'm using an example, like in the automotive space is that we say meet and greet, fact, find, qualify. And then we select a vehicle and then we find a vehicle. And I'm just using the automotive for an example. Yeah. And I know that you have an A to a Z, eight step program, eight step system. Everybody has these A to Z's that they do. Now you need to know that like the back of your hand, you need to be really fluent and you need to take control and you need to guide the client. Now, where do I really help people scale fast? Everybody knows how to do the freaking job. Okay. But the elite, when the no comes in, okay, there's two things. Number one, do people feel comfortable in their gut that you're the right person they should, should do business with? That's number one. Number two is what you're saying logically makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to give you some examples because you told me like, Hey, I want to go look at some more cars and stuff like that. Right. So we teach salespeople word tracks, right? So Tommy, I'm going to give you an example. So me and you just go on a test drive. Okay. We get off the test drive and I'm just, and by the way, we teach every industry and every objection. Okay. If it was solar, I would do solar. I could do, I could do any objection. We're going to talk automotive for a minute. Guy gets off a test drive, me and you, I'm the, I'm the salesman. You're the customer. We get out and I say, Hey, Tommy, what do you think? One to 10. I know it's an 11. You smile in it. Your wife loves it. It's got the better fuel mileage, it's got the gas mileage um, that you wanted. It's got the leather seats, the sunroof, it's the color. We're going to replace the, you know, the vehicle you have now with higher miles, you know, um, come inside. Let me show you how easy it is to do business with us. And you're like, Hey, I got a couple more cars. I'm going to go look at. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm going to say, hey, number one, I totally understand. Let me ask you a question. Are the cars you're going to go look at similar to the one that me and you just drove or completely different? Which one? Um, they're similar. They're sports. They're, they're good. Similar. To, good okay, good, cool. I because guess. if they said completely different, then I'd be like, damn, my bad, Tommy. You're so cool. I wouldn't even paying attention, man. Let's go back to the lot because right. I got you on the wrong ride. I need to go find it. But you said similar. I'm going to say, hey, I totally understand. Hey, hypothetically, Tommy, let's say hypothetically, you had already gone and seen all these other vehicles. I don't care if there's two of them. I don't care if there's 10. Let's say you saw every one of them. And then my beautiful 2018 Nissan Altima with 30,000 miles, we're going to act like it was the last one you went and looked at. Tommy, after seeing every single car, all of them, in the end, what would be the deciding factor on which one you probably end up buying? Would it be the car itself, regardless of the deal, or would it be the great deal that the dealership's willing to give you? Which one? I think I, I I always want a price shop. I like to get a good deal. Cool. So it's not a matter of if you're going to buy, Tommy. It's when. And the when is when the deal's right, right? Absolutely. Cool. So if I could save you some time and money, would that offend you in any way? Would you be upset with me at all? No, I'd actually enjoy thank, that. Thank goodness, Tommy. Come on inside, man. And that's it. I'm going to pull you inside. Now, when I get you inside, I'm going to get a write-up sheet, which is, Tommy, when you do want to buy, hypothetically, how do you want your new car titled? Hey, Tommy, the car you're trading in outside today, that's going to be the car you're trading in, right? Let me go ahead and grab the key so I can have my manager check it out. Also, you got a payment on the vehicle you're trading in. Is that right? Cool. So I know payment's going to be important on the new vehicle. Would you agree? Yes. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and get two seconds of information here so I can get the payment to the penny on the new car. That way you have everything to make a decision if you decide to. Is that cool? Cool. I got a write-up sheet. I got a trade appraisal. I got the keys to his car. I got a credit app. This son of a bitch is buying a car. Yes. Watch. But that's, that's the deal. But if somebody says, like, let's go back to the lot. Let's say we get out of the car and you say, hey, I need to think about it. Say that. Say anything. I need it. to think about it. Tommy, of course you need to think about it. Listen, I haven't given you enough information not to think about it. What I'd like to do is give you a quick five-minute proposal of all the numbers so when you go home, you got something to think about. Would that be fair? Yes. Call me to do the same thing I just did to you again. Right, same thing. It, it, it never stops. So the goal is in the car business is that it's very simple. Up comes in. The customer comes on the lot, right? And then we're going to take them on a test drive. Fill the will sells the deal. We're going to make sure they love the car. That's when they envision owning the car for the very first time. Then we're going to ask them to buy it. They, we've got to get them in the showroom floor because if we don't get them on the showroom floor, we don't write them up, they're not going to close. Now, Tommy, now you go to the inside, right? You know, when you're closing the deal, Yep. those are a whole different set of objections, but we teach like 20 or 30 objections in every industry. And by the way, the same way that I just hit you with these objections, 
This is how every owner, manager, salesperson should knock the dust off each other for 10 or 15 minutes every morning before everybody goes into the field. So everybody's mouthpiece is loose and everybody's words are flowing like water. I love it. Yeah. You, you got to practice every day. We call it our morning mojo call. We got two 15 minute calls every day. You know, real quick, let me ask you one question. The sales warrior playbook talks about all kinds of stuff to help people dominate in the sales industry. Tell me some of the highlights of the book real quick. Yeah. So well, number one, it's simple, right? And if, so I'm a, I'm a book reader. Some people like audio stuff. I like to hold things in my hand. I like to underline it and circle it. Right. right. I don't use a book as like a book as I'm reading it. I actually like to use it as a workbook. So the sales warrior playbook is physically a workbook. You open it and it has 60 or 70 of the toughest objections that every industry will get. On the left side, it says like, you know, I'm just giving an example. I've got a couple more estimates I'm going to get. Okay. And then I show you the word track that I would use if I was sitting there. Now, I don't know the customer yet, but ideally, this is what I would tell you if we were role playing. Now, to the right, it's, it's always like you're different than me and I'm different than you. I don't want you to be me, but I do want you to go get everything in your life that you want and more. So I, I need you to maybe change up the language just a little bit so that you can memorize it. So you have something tattooed on your heart to say. So the sales warrior playbook is physically a workbook. So when you open it, it talks literally for 20 pages about the mindset you have to have to be a killer, the killer mentality. And then it goes through 60 of your toughest objections. And then literally each objection shows how I would cover it. And then on the right side of the page, it says, make it your own, which means you might change a couple words, right? Like anything that should be done today shouldn't be put off for tomorrow. Wouldn't you agree, Tommy? Yes. Cool. Let's go ahead and take care of this right now. That's if somebody says they want to wait. That word track is sitting there and I can get people to trigger yeses back to me. So I write these word tracks out and then people that are in any industry can literally look at that. And even if you're in another industry than what I'm talking about, you could change 5% of the words. And it will still match. And then guess what? People turn it into a closing book. Now, this is all face-to-face -face selling. Now, on the back side of the book, it talks about on the phone. Everybody's on the phone. And everybody that's on the phone needs to know certain scripts. I call it like the deadly scripts that you should use depending on what kind of phone call it is, an inbound or an outbound. Um, I could do an outbound call with you right now as a cold call. and I You got me. Out. You guys outbound me. No, that's but, why you're sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, but that's what I was saying. Like, I can get you to say anything I want. So, so let's hear a really good outbound. So, listen, you so, call me up. So, so I'm in automotive, right? Yeah. Let's say my manager, and I'm just, I'm gonna give you an example. How I'm gonna get you to say yes three times, and I'm gonna sell you. Okay. Because I'll tell you what I'm gonna do before I do it. Okay. Okay. So, let's say my manager gives me a list of people that bought a car in 2019. Yeah. It's 2023. I'm a salesman. I'm sitting on my ass in a cubicle, and I'm like, hey, I want to be aligned today and hunt. Okay. You open the book, the Sales Warrior Playbook, and it says a book of daily script. So I'm going to call you. Okay, you ready? Yep. Okay, ring, ring. Hey there, this is Tommy. Hey, Tommy, what's going on? It's Andy down here at ABC Motors, where you bought your last car from. Tommy, I was reviewing your account. I need about 30 seconds of your time. It's extremely important. Can I get 30 seconds? Uh, yep, I guess. Hey, I know you're busy, man. Okay. You are. <laughs> hey, listen, do you still have the 2019 Toyota Corolla you bought from us back in 2020? Do you yeah, still got you it? bet. It's still doing good. Okay, cool. You guys hey. have worked on it every year. Good. Well, you're amazing. Number one, I appreciate you taking the call. Johnny, my general manager, I don't know if you met him when you were here last time, but he wanted me to personally reach out to you and ask you one question. If we were willing to offer you more money, more money on your 2019 Toyota Corolla than what it was worth, would you mind if I told you how much that was? Could I tell you? Yes. <laughs> you feel the yes is flowing? Yeah. Cool. Hey, to hey, uh, Tommy, let me tell you how this works. Basically, Johnny, my general manager, he's getting so crazy. He's already wrote over $200,000 in equity checks this last week overpaying for people's cars. He's getting so crazy. We're about to put him in a straight jacket. All I need you to do is come down to the dealership for about two minutes. I'm going to give you a crazy offer and blow your mind. Tommy, in the end, it's completely your decision. Okay. When can you make it down right now? Would have to work be best. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Okay, cool. Hey, Tommy, <laughs> let me ask you a question. If your house is worth $100,000 and I was going to give you 500 grand, you'd probably give me two minutes of your time, right? Yes, sir. Tommy, why don't you swing by after work? My name's Andy Elliott. When I'm done, I'm going to send you a picture of me and the address that where we're at at the dealership. I'm going to meet you outside for two minutes. I'm going to blow your mind. And in the end, it's your decision. Can you swing by this afternoon? I can't wait to meet you. That's okay. Cold. Now watch, hold on. Now I've got to sell you when you get in. Hey, Tommy, what's going on? It's Andy. Thank, thank, I'm so glad you came down. What would you like to drink? Something hot or cold to drink? Hot. Tell me you don't want nothing. Nothing. Hey, the way things work around here, Tommy, if you come to my house, I'm going to feed you, okay? I'll get you something hot to drink, cold to drink. I'll get you an empty cup. I don't care, but I got to get you something. Why? The strongest selling tool in the, in the world we already talked about earlier was reciprocity. reciprocity. I'm going to give you I'm going to make yes. you. Yes. I'm going to make you take it. 
And guess what? I'm going to say, Tommy, have a seat. Now I'm going to go outside to your car and I'm going to do what I said I was going to do, which I'm going to get the information off your car. And then I'm going to walk to my manager's office. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to ditch the keys and get those keys out of my damn hand because I ain't going back to the table with them. And I don't need my manager to do my job. Okay. I'm the freaking dude. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to say, all right, Tommy, remember Jonathan or Johnny, I was telling you about my general manager. He's going to check, check a vehicle out. He's about to go drive it. Johnny, I want to ask you, or Johnny wanted me to ask you one question, Tommy, hypothetically, let's say Johnny was willing to offer you more money, more money than your car was worth, right? You said you'd want to know how much it was, right? So he's going to check it out. So let's say, and then at that point, your goal is, is your goal is to give them something to make them bite like no other. Mm -hmm. Okay. And at the end, this is where people usually mess up because they can get people in the door. They just can't close them. You feel me? Yep. So this is where every salesperson loses it right here. Okay. Okay. So what do we say? So you, you said, well, what's the offer? Yeah. So, so, so what do we say right here? We, we say something that has to, to do with getting them to trigger. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you say? So I'd probably break it down and somewhere along the line, well, everything's a little bit different, but I would say, listen, right now, hypothetically, if I was to offer you more money than your car's worth, would you want to know how much that was? They say, yeah, they come in. And then once they come in at that point, we just say, Hey, if we're going to offer you more money, would you, would you want something newer, better gas mileage, lower miles, um, you know, a lower payment, what would it be? And usually at that point, that client would say, if I could get more money, that's what I would take. And then you just say, all right, dude, if you had a winning lottery ticket in your pocket, would you want to know how much it's worth? Yes. Cool. My, my manager is going to be done here in a minute and he's going to give us a crazy offer. And then you take them outside on the way in, they thought about what they were going to get. They wouldn't have came in if they wouldn't have sold it or wouldn't have traded it. If they could have got enough for it, they wouldn't have done it. Think about it, Tommy, you're not going to go anywhere. If somebody's not going to give you enough, but yeah. that, but that's a cold call. It's a simple, yeah, that's a cold call. I just, th th this is going to be amazing for like rehash. And I like what you do there because you're taking, listen, I got a manager. I, you give, you're basically giving the authority. You're saying, listen, my, so when I, when I get a bad review, that's what I always do is I tell them, listen, the owner actually told me to call you about this. And we got to listen to find out where we made a mistake and we're going to make a difference And your time's money. So not only am I going to give you money for your time, but I'm going to figure out how to leave a five out of five taste in your mouth because I want to make sure, number one, we're embarrassed by that one star. Number two is we're going to self-correct mm -hmm. and we're going to talk to this technician to make sure this doesn't happen again. And then I'm going to follow up relentlessly and then I'm going to have them send me uh, something so I can put it on Loom. And I'm going to say, hey there, Andy, listen, my name's Tommy Mello. I heard about this Yelp that you left on us and I just wanted to let you know. I find out the tech that did it. I find out the lead tech and the manager. We are self-correcting this. This is not going to happen again. And I want to let you know that your, your home, your garage is important to me. And I started this company from nothing. I've had my family work for this company. My word is all I got in this world. And I'm here to make it better. So please let me offer you a solution so we can get you five out of five and you're happy. And then I'm going to send you something to re redo that Yelp. I, I want it's a simple. new Yelp. Or yeah. take a one star and say, Tommy followed up. But I got to make it into a system and make it quick. So where do I buy your book? Yeah. So if anybody right now wants a copy of the book, okay, I'll give you a cell phone. They can just text. Say, I want a copy of the Sales Warrior Playbook. Okay. Give me the cell phone. Yeah. 918. It's simple. 918. 918. 210. 210. 0254. 0254. Yeah. And, and what do I text? Yeah. Just text and say, hey, I want a copy of the Sales Warrior Playbook. And then I'll send you a link. You can buy it, rock and roll. And we have it on our website, but we also got it placed in about three other different places. Who's this but if number? Text me, that's mine. 918-210-0254. Jeez, you're crazy. It's easy. Everything that we do in our company is done by text message. Everything that we do. Listen, your call to action can be email. It can be call me. It can be whatever. Texting so, is the key. Yeah, I, I so, agree. So we, we text everything. Everything It's the easiest way for us to make sure that we get everybody taken care of. Because what if a guy's in a, you know, freaking the UK right now, it's freaking 3 AM, you know? So when he wakes up, he's like wanting to call and then we're sleeping. So if he texts me, like we'll always get no, to texting it. is the key, man. I, I've studied this stuff. 90, they say like 97% and I have 97.5, but 99.9% .9 of text messages get read. And yeah, if you, you got people that want something, the deal is, is that there's all this funnel shit and everything else. Like, look, you're selling something people need. But the fact is, I always tell people I'm in a room, only a few of you guys are going to use this stuff. Only a few of you guys are going to take advantage because guess what? You're waiting for some grand billow of good fortune to set you afloat into better, better, th nicer, better things. But that's not going to happen. And you guys should take action. Look, I'm a big fan. Look, me, me and Andy are talking about some serious shit. Not only for anyone, but everything I'm working on. Mm -hmm. And... 
how do you stand a chance when we're out here figuring out better ways? I always want to whiteboard with you for like an hour. So we're going to make that shit happen that we yeah. talked about. Yeah. But uh, everybody you know. just needs to level up. This is the year to grow. It's that simple. Tommy, you say it all the time. It's time to grow either train or complain, either train level or complain. Up. Yeah. And recruit a little bit better and make a difference. It, it, you know, get your mindset of a growth mindset an abundance mindset and manifest whatever you want. Uh, what are three books that you love? Yeah. So I love the sales warrior. It's, it, it's kind of crazy, but there's a mindset of a sales warrior is what it's called. I read it when I was younger. It's a guy named Jason Forrest wrote it. It's called the mindset of a sales warrior. It's really good. Jason Forrest. Uh -huh. Mindset of a sales warrior. David Goggins new book um, is really good. Never finished. I yeah, mean, I, I have that. Book. Yeah. And I would yeah. say, listen to the audible because it's okay. really, really good. And then I think Relentless by Tim Grover. I mean, those are just like top. I met Tim Grover, yeah. Relentless. Just top books. It was a good book. That, that's actually on YouTube. Relentless, yeah. I found yeah. it on YouTube. Yeah. And the Relentless book, there's that winning book and the never, and then Relentless. But Relentless is what it's about, man. And it's just about, you know. Michael, he talks savage. a lot about, he worked with Michael Jordan. He worked with some of the best athletes in the world. So if someone wants to reach out, do we got yourself on his other, any should we follow you on TikTok? Yeah, Do we find you on yeah, Facebook? Yeah, you can. Everything's YouTube. official Andy Elliott. I mean, official any, Andy Elliott. Yeah. And anybody can go to YouTube and type in Andy Elliott. We have a thousand sales training videos on there. But I was just saying that official Andy Elliott on Instagram or TikTok or any of that stuff. And finally, we talked about a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I think everybody should have enjoyed this because we're pretty intense guys. Yeah. Maybe I left something out. Maybe there's a call to action. Maybe just a piece of advice. Maybe something with their mindset. But I want to give you a couple of minutes to close us out. Yeah. So I would just say, I think every single person needs to decide to reach for more. And when I say more, I mean this, look, be where your feet are. And I'm going to finish with this. Okay. If you want to really make an impact and do some big shit, and I mean, really, really do some big stuff, you're going to have to shut your mind down and stop being everywhere at one time. When you're at work, be at freaking work. Okay. Don't think about your wife. Don't think about your kids. Don't think about the gym work. When you go home, put your phone down. Okay. And go spend time with your wife and kids. Go spend time with them and shut it off. And everybody says, oh, you can't do that. Bullshit. Shut it off and go show them you love them. Because if you don't take your family with you, you're never going to go far. It's not going to freaking happen. And you're going to regret it. And if you have this right now and you're like, I want to go make money and you have your family and then you go chase this and you lose this, you're going to hate yourself. So be where your feet are. If you're at work, guess what? When your wife gets home or when you get home with your wife, she don't want you to tell her that you love her. She wants you to show her you love her, put your phone down, and that's how she's going to fall more in love with you. Then when you go to the gym, quit thinking about work, quit thinking about your kids, quit thinking about your family, and work out and freaking grind. So everywhere I am is where I am. And I mean that. And, uh, and no one else can do this. And why a guy like me has been able to do more in three freaking years than most people do in three lifetimes, and the same with you, is, and by the way, do I work more than most? Yeah, but guess what? People are like, I need three hours of my kids. Shut your mouth, dude. You don't need three hours of your kids. You need 20 minutes with your kids, but you need to put your phone down. You need to play with them. They need to see it in your eyes that you're happy to be with them. Tickle them, play with them, have a good time. And then guess what? They don't want to spend any more time with you. They're good. If dad gave them 20 hard minutes, they'd be like, dad, kick rocks. We're good. See you tomorrow. And then you could be a killer businessman and rock it. But you know what? Instead of ever getting ahead and one day retiring and getting to have a great life and going and doing some crazy big cool shit, you're going to work half-assed your whole life. Your mind's going to be everywhere. You're going to be confused. And you're going to grind your whole life. And you're never going to get anywhere. So I would end this with be where your feet are, which means everybody isn't where they really are. I'm on this podcast with you. I'm not thinking about anything else except for me and you spending time together. When I'm at dinner with you, I don't keep my phone in my hand or even on the table because it's disrespectful. I shouldn't even have went to eat with you if I was going to have my phone on me. So put your phone down and put it away and don't even have it on the table. Smart. If I'm even eating with somebody and they got their phone on the table, why are we even here? I mean, I want to know, why are we even here? Why did I really take time out of my life to come sit down with you to eat when you got your phone on the table? And people say, well, I got a lot going on. Bullshit. You're distracted, man. Your mind's everywhere, and that's why you half-ass everything. I, will, I feel sad for you because you're about to get 100,000 text messages. So Yeah, but, but so I would say just be where <laughs> – I would just say be where your feet are, and guess what? We'll end it with don't be one-dimensional. You can have it all, Tommy. You can have your health. People say you can't. I say bull crap. They got, they got problems. You can have your health. You can be a marriage millionaire. You can be the best father in the world. Your wife can admire you. You can look in the mirror and be in great shape. You can have it all. 
as long as when you're there, you're really there. And then what happens next, you'll go really be there. I think that's great advice. And yeah. it's something we all need to work on because turn your phone off, focus on the focus. You're doing it. Yeah. And it's hard. It's never, it's never going to be easy, but being number one, getting ahead, being legendary is not easy. Yeah. So, if you, dude, if you worked eight hours and you're like, I work 15 hour days. Well, you know what? I bet I could scale you back to eight if you'd really work. Oh yeah. Problem is you don't really work. So you got to work 15. Right. Okay. So like, why don't you show up and really work and try this and everybody just see if they have a mind that they can really stay focused with. And if they do, I guarantee everybody just 10 X their money. Well, you know, the, the last life. thing I want to say is there's all these guys with side hustles. I'm doing this, 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 mm -hmm. this. And if you read the Gary Keller book, the one thing or read essentialism totally and you agree. put something on your door that says, I'm busy working on the one thing mm -hmm. and you're focused and you know where your time should be spent you and become a you hire the right people. It, it's game over. But listen, man, you yeah. are inspiring. Hey, let, let's I'm finish this with say one thing. Yes. Most people are a master of none. Yep. And that's what you just Jack said. of all trades, master of none. Yeah, exactly. So I just want to say right now, if you've mastered something, you're probably the top 5% in the industry of that. And your paycheck reflects it and your life reflects it because you've mastered it. If you think you're the best and you're not earning in the top 5%, then you haven't mastered it yet. It sounds like you got work to do. I love it, man. Yeah. Well, this is great. Thank you for All taking right. the time today, brother. All right, babe. Appreciate it. Let's go. It's good stuff. This is fabulous.